Hi there grade 8 and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Maths. We're going to be carrying on from where we left off from the last lesson on algebraic expressions. Um, please remember here is the email address and don't forget to send emails if there are any questions. Right, let's just revise what we did in our last lesson. So we covered how to write an expression containing an unknown value and an example here would be 3 added to the unknown value with 3, we write as 3, plus unknown value, we can name it x, y, b, whatever you'd like to name it. Here, we've just decided to name it x. Then we learned how to simplify an expression. So 3x plus 2x is the same as 5x. They have the same values. If we had to know the values of the x, they're the same, so we can put them together as 5x. We also learned how to evaluate expressions when you were given the value of the unknown number. So for example, we've got 3x plus 2, we're given the fact that x is 4, and so we can substitute it in and go 3 times 4 plus 2, and 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Okay, you all happy with that? Remember, if there's any questions, don't forget to email your questions through. Okay. We're going to learn some new terminology now, um, then we're going to look at how to label an expression, and this terminology we are going to draw on in the remainder of the lesson. Okay, We must understand that 3x is a product because it actually means 3 times x, and you know from in being in primary school that, that when you multiply two things together, the answer is called the product. Right, when we write it as 3x, the 3 is the coefficient of x. So 3 comes in front of it, it's the coefficient of x, and the x is called the variable. It varies all the time. We don't know its value, so it changes. Right, the next thing, when an expression is written as a sum, the different parts of the expression are called the terms of the expression. So here, 3x plus 5x, 3x is a term, and 5x is another term. Okay, the x and x doesn't make a difference. We can, we can add those together and make them into one term by simplifying the expression. But for now, they are 3x and 5x. They remain as each being a term. Right, but when the variables are the same and we can say 3x plus 5x, we say they have like variables. The 3x and 5x are like variables. If it was 3x plus 5y, there would be unlike variables. When there is a number without a variable in an expression, we call it a constant. So here, 5 plus 3x, 5 is the constant. It remains the same. Um, you cannot change the value of 5. 5 is just 5. When we evaluate an expression, the answer is the output value of the expression. So if we were given what the variable was worth, and this x, say, was worth 2, then we would be able to work out the value of that whole expression, and it would be 11, because it would be 5 plus 3 times 2, which is 6. It would give me 11, and that would be the output value of the expression. Right, let's label this expression. We've got 5x minus 2. 5x is the product, because it's the answer to 5 times x, but it is also the term of the expression. Okay, x is the variable of that term, it's the unknown number, and 5 is the coefficient. We also have the 2 being the constant, because in this case 2 is just 2. Here, this is going to change depending on the value of the variable, but this cannot change, it remains as 2. Right, that whole thing together, this whole thing, as we know, is called the expression. And then, if we are given the value of the variable, in this case x, and we are told that x here is 3, then the output value of this expression would be 13, because 3 times 5 is 15, 15 minus 2 gives me 13, 13 is the output value. Right, let's move on. Now we're going to see if we can add in another variable to the expression. So when we add a different variable, we need to give it a different name. Okay, it would be like if you've got oranges and apples in a basket, then they have different names. They're not, they come under the whole thing of fruit, like here it would be coming under the whole thing of variables, the whole group, but they have to have a different name. For example, 
3 times a number added to 2 times a different number. We would say 3x plus 2y. These are different variables. They're going to have different values. See, it's times a number, and that is a different number, which means that x and y will be different. So we now have two different variables, which have two different values. And if we wanted to find the value of this expression, we would need to know the value of both of those variables. Right. Let's try writing expressions for these statements. I'm going to put them up. You pause the video here. You try and figure them out, and then we will go over them together. Okay, let's see what you did. 10 times a number, take away 3 times another number. There's your 10 times one number, the unknown number being x, and minus 3 times the other number, the other number being y. Again, you can name them whatever you like because it doesn't tell you to name them x and y. You could have had 10a minus 3b, 10x minus 3z. It doesn't really matter as long as the variables are different. Write the next one. 5 divided by a number subtract 6 times another number. 5 divided by x um, is 5 divided by that number. Then you're subtracting 6 times another number. You can see our variables are different. If you wanted to, that could be written as a fraction, where it is 5 over x. We know that the x part would be the denominator, and the denominator is a divisor. So 5 divided by x, 5 over x is the same thing. Right, then we've got 7 times a number, add 4 divided by another number. Here, that would be very similar to this. So it would be 7x plus 4. 4 divided by y, or you could write it 4 over y. Okay, now let's try and find the value of these expressions, and in every single case, x is 1 and y is 2. Again, I'm going to put them up, you pause the video, see if you can work these out, and then we will go over them together. Right, how did you do? 3x minus sorry, 10x minus 3y, where x is 1 and y is 2. We've got 10 times 1 minus 3 times 2, which gives me 10 minus 6, and my answer is 4. Right, the next one, 5 divided by x minus 6y, x is still 1, y is still 2, so we substitute in, it would be 5 divided by 1 minus 6 times 2, 5 minus 12, don't panic here, it is correct. You're going to use your um, knowledge of negative numbers, and your answer would be minus 7. All right, so don't panic when you are taking away a bigger number from a smaller number, because in grade 7, you learned how to work with negative numbers. Right, let's look at number 3. 7x plus 4 divided by y. x is still 1, y is still 2. We're going to have 7 times 1, plus 4 divided by 2, and we will have 7 plus 2, which is 9. The next one, 7xy plus 2y, we're going to substitute in, and we're going to say 7x is 1, y is 2. It doesn't matter that we have two variables next to one another, we're just going to calculate them in as they come. Plus 2y, which is 2 times 2. So 7 times 1 would be 7, and 7 times 2 is 14 plus 2 times 2, which is 4, and 14 plus 4 is 18. Right, would you say that 10x plus 2y is the same as 12xy? Let's have a look. If you said no, you are correct. Well done. But let's see why. The reason is that 10x and 2y are different terms. They have different variables. They have unlike variables. So we can't just put them together. So let me explain it to you in a very funny way. X and Y, you can say, for example, they are um, eggs and um, apples. Okay, Your eggs and apples are not going to be able to combine if you are just adding them together. They will remain separate in the basket. Whereas, if you've got X and Y and you multiply them together, then you would do that. That would be almost like creating a new fruit or a new type of egg with an apple flavor. Right, 
So the reason is that 2x and 2y are different terms and they have unlike variables. When unlike variables are added together, they remain separate. If they are multiplied, then they would be combined. So 10x times 2y would become 20xy because we'd have to multiply the 10 by the 2 as well. Okay, but because they are added, they need to stay as being added together. In the basket, you're going to have 10 eggs and you're going to have two apples and they're going to remain 10 eggs and two apples. Right, see if you can now simplify the following expressions. Um, I'm going to put them up. You pause the video, work them out, and we will go over them together. Let's see how you did. Right, we've got 3x plus 6xy minus 2y. So if we go back to our eggs and apples, 3x, say that's an egg, that's an egg apple, and that's an apple. We can't do anything. They have to remain the same. So nothing can be done because there are no like terms. The operations are addi addition and subtraction, and so we can't add them together. We would have in our basket three eggs, two egg, uh, six egg apples, and two apples. They can't combine. Right, let's have a look at the next one. 8xy minus 3y plus 2xy. Here we have like terms in the x and the y's. We can now say 10xy minus 3y. Yeah, here are your egg apples. You've got eight egg apples and two egg apples, but here are just your apples. Right. Number three, 9y times 2 plus 3x. So you've got two lots of 9y, and so we can multiply them together to give you 18y plus 3x. The next one, 5xy times y plus 2xy. Here you are multiplying together. You are combining them. Okay, That gives you your egg apples, remember? So we've got 5xy plus 2xy. They are now like terms. You can now put them together and now you have 7xy. Let's look at the last one. 2x times x. Here again. The multiplier says you combine them, and you're going to end up with 2x squared. That would be the same as if you were going 4 times 4, you would say 4 squared, or 2 times 2, you would say 2 squared. So x times x would be x squared, and the 2, in this case, the little 2, would, give you, would be the exponent. Okay, so here we go. That's the exponent. Right, now can you help with this? There were two boys having an argument in class. They were given this expression. Okay, three seven sorry seven x squared y cubed plus three hundred and one y cubed x squared. What they wanted to do now was Andela said that the terms were like terms, while Kevin said that they weren't like terms. So let's help the boys figure out who is right and who is not. What do you think? Pause the video here. Try and come up with an explanation of whether you think that Andel is right or whether you think that Kevin is right. So in other words, are they like terms or are they not like terms? Right, let's have a look. We've got 7x squared, y cubed, and 301 y cubed, x squared. So let's break it down and understand how it is made up. The first part of the expression, 7x squared, y cubed, means 7 times x times x times y times y times y. The second part of the expression is 301 y cubed x squared, which means that it's 301 x, uh, 301 times y times y times y times x times x. Now, if you have a look carefully, there we have x's, we've got two, here we have two x's, there we have three y's, and here we have three y's. So let me go through the explanation and then we can go over this again. The coefficient doesn't make a difference in this case with what we're trying to find out. We know that when we multiply numbers and letters together, it doesn't matter which way around they are written. It doesn't matter the order that they're written in. When we broke these down, we can see that in both terms there are the same amount of x's and y's. 
like I showed you just now, there's two X's, there's two X's, there's two Y's, there's two Y's. So if we were actually given values for the X and the Y's, this whole thing would end up being the same value as that whole thing. Let's leave out the 7 and the 301 for now. It's that whole thing and that whole thing because those are the terms. So the value of that is actually the same as the value of that. So, which means that Andele was correct, okay? Because x squared y cubed is actually the same as y cubed x squared. They're just written around the different ways in a different order. We can now simplify the expression 7x squared y cubed plus 301 y cubed x squared because we now know that the terms are the same to be 308 x squared y cubed or 308 y cubed x squared. It means the same, the terms are the same. Okay, so both answers would be correct. Right, let's do one last thing and see if you can help with this one. Tim thinks that 135x and 35x plus 100 are equivalent. They are the same value. Let's think about that. Pause the video, you think what you would write down as an explanation, and then we can go over it together. Right, is Tim correct? No, Tim's not correct, and let's look at the reason why. Okay, 135x is a term on its own, and it means 135 lots of x. They've been added together. Um, so there's x plus x plus x plus x 135 times, okay? The next where is three, 35x plus 100, they, it's an expression made up of a term with a coefficient and a constant. So 100 would be the constant, and the term with the coefficient would be 35 times x. So it means x plus x plus x 35 times. And that's very different to 135 lot of x's. Okay, the term with the coefficient is 35x, and it means 35x's have been added together, as I've just explained. So the two parts of the expression have an addition operation, and they can't be put together. The one is a constant, it's just 100, and the other one, if we go back to our eggs and apples, it could be 35x. We don't know, the 100 is just 100, it could be 100 rand. Okay, and that is the explanation for that. Please don't forget to actually um, email any questions that you have. And also, there is an activity that is um, attached to this lesson. The memo will also be there. Work through it carefully. And if you have any questions and you don't understand some of the answers, please feel free to email. Thank you, guys, and see you again next time.